Morgan Jade Violi was born on November the 3rd, 1988, to parents Stacy and Glenn Violi. And she had two older sisters, Heather and Nikki. She was described as friendly, smart, and very smiley. She loved art, writing, and dancing. And she was entering her second grade. Now at this time, Morgan was living in Colony Apartments, now known as Ashton Park Apartments in Bowling Green, Kentucky, with her mum and her two sisters, as both her parents had separated and were going through a divorce. It was on a hot summer's day in Bowling Green. It was July the 24th, 1996. And Morgan was playing outside with a friend. Her sisters were also playing outside. Morgan and her friend were walking from a play area, which was just inside some woods, close to the apartments. And as they were heading back towards the car park for the apartments, a burgundy van pulled up. At first the man tried to grab Morgan's friend, and when he was unsuccessful, he quickly grabbed Morgan and got her into the van. Heather, Morgan's sister, heard her scream and ran towards her. She saw a man sitting in the van. At the same time, Heather had seen Morgan's friend run between the apartment buildings, so immediately thought that the girls had been playing. Also, sister Nikki saw the man drive with the side door open, and he smiled and waved at her as he went past. She couldn't remember what he looked like. Luckily, a friend and an adult had seen the abduction happen, and police were called immediately. With the Bowling Green Police and FBI investigating, they received tips every few minutes, which they checked out. In fact, other investigations into other crimes were put on hold to focus on Morgan's search. The description of the van was a maroon or burgundy coloured 1978 Chevy van, and all vans with similar descriptions were stopped and searched, including motels in the area. The suspect was described as a white male with collar-length sandy brown hair, looked to be in his 20s and slender build with defined muscles. He had a moustache and a bit of a beard. His sharp, distinct nose is something witnesses noticed first. And although the abductor was described as having a moustache and signs of a beard, it doesn't show that on one of the composite sketches. The van had been found in Franklin, Tennessee, and it had been stolen from Dayton, Ohio on July 23rd. It was noon on Sunday the 20th of October, and a woman walking on her property came across the remains of a child near the old barn about 40 miles away from Bowling Green. Now at the time of Morgan's abduction, she was wearing a white shirt, white rainbow striped shorts and pink jelly shoes, including a yellow barrette in her hair. The authorities found a yellow barrette amongst the brown hair in the remains found. So now the investigation turned from child abduction to homicide, but didn't release any further details on how she died. Although it was difficult to identify the remains as Morgan, because the remains were so decomposed and they had no dental records from Morgan to compare with. However, the hair from the remains was tested and it seemed consistent with Morgan's. And then a forensic pathologist worked with a Knoxville digital photography company and together they put a video footage of the skull after scanning Morgan's picture, then the pathologist set the teeth as a guide mark and rotated the skull until the head's tilt matched the angle in the picture to see if the teeth would fit. And then a dentist would make a final decision. Within a couple of days, it was announced by the FBI that the teeth were a perfect match and the remains belonged to Morgan 
Violi. Although things would take a bit of a turn, as it was Glenn Violi who became person of interest due to circumstances. As he was meant to have turned up for a custody hearing at 10.30 the day Morgan went missing. But he didn't turn up and instead he went to work, thinking he didn't have to be at the hearing. He said his lawyer said he didn't need to show up as it was decided that Stacy would be the custodial parent with Glenn getting custody every other weekend. So on the 24th of July, Glenn turned up for work and after he'd finished, he went round to the apartments and that would be around 12.50. And that's when he learned of his daughter's abduction. It is believed that although some people think he did it, throughout the investigation, his daughter's and ex-wife didn't believe he would ever do that. People were implying that he might have hired someone to have abducted Morgan and kill her. And this came about when he'd failed polygraph tests. But he had always maintained his innocence. And until this day, no arrests have ever been made on the murder of Morgan Violi. And also another van that was spotted on July the 25th was parked by the barn on the North Swift Road, on Webster Road, for about four hours. And it hasn't been found. And it was around 100 feet away from where Morgan was found in the October of that year. And it was a 1979 or older white Ford van with slatted trader door type window on the side. Please like and subscribe for more content.